Hi, um, we're from Crossroads Center for Children. And first of all, we'd like to thank our sponsor from Marshall and Sterling, um, the Scotia branch. Matt Norton has been there for us for insurance, and he was the first one to jump uh, right, you know, right away to say, yes, we would love to sponsor this. This is our first time doing something, but it seems like wherever we go, people haven't yet heard about Crossroads. And for all the good that we do, and for our hugely gr rapidly growing um, population and all the kids and families that we help it's really important for people to know about our school and what we do so um, I wanted to thank Marshall and Sterling you know right off the top um, and then I wanted to thank all of these uh, brave people that are here today <laughs> because this is not um, something that any of anyone is accustomed to doing and we're all taking the leap of faith um, to be here and just to have a conversation about Crossroads and because we love it so much. Um, so I just wanted to start um, with introductions about who you are and you know how you have a role with Crossroads. What is your role or relationship? So start with, with Cindy over here. Oh, and I didn't know I was going first. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm Cindy Barkowski. I'm the parent. Uh, my husband and I have a 22-year-old son, John. Um, on the autism spectrum who started here at Crossroads. One of, we're one of the sort of founding parents go way back. Um, very happy to be here. Um, our son, well, I don't know what else. I have two other children as well. We live in Rotterdam. Um, Crossroads is a wonderful place. It was easy uh, for me to become involved because we, you know, these people have helped us. Some of them are former educators who were there in the classroom with our son way back at two and a half, and now he's 22. Um, a wonderful place that w really, I could see, was making a difference and really reached children, um, children on the autism spectrum. Um, we could talk forever about what autism is and, and what they do, but um, discrete trial training and all the therapies and, and what happens here at Crossroads doesn't happen anywhere in the, in, else in the Capital District. and. It just made so much sense for us to become involved, go there back then, and then for me to step on to be a board member. And I'm really happy to be here, and I don't want to take up any more time. Go to the next person. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, my name is Wendy Whitman. I, along with Cindy, am one of the co-founders of Crossroads Center for Children. Uh, my son, um, Zachary, uh, was diagnosed with autism at 18 months, and he started Crossroads before he was two. Uh, and basically we love the program so much because it's it because it works it's a scientifically based program and we saw our children grow and develop and become part of our families and our communities again I went on to serve as president of the board I was on the board for 18 years um, and I just I just want to say that, that the staff the children their family their family and it's one of the most positive programs that I've ever seen, and I'm a special education teacher, so I have actually taught um, in schools with ch children with special needs. And it's, it's a positive, data-based, research-based program that works for kids with autism. And I, too, want to thank every single sponsor we've ever had because we wouldn't be here without the support of the community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Vicki Ramatar, and um, I've been, I haven't been there for the whole time like everyone else here, but um, I've been with Crossroads for 10 years, and I've seen um, the most remarkable progress with kids, and it's just amazing. And I didn't think when I first went there that ABA was going to be my bag of tricks. I was said, I'll give it a year, let's see. But after that year, I, there's no way I would ever go anywhere else. It's incredible and now I'm doing resource development I'm not teaching um, and I'm trying to bring resources giving Tuesday okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back to that. <laughs> we'll come back to that I'm Kelly Young I'm the executive director of Crossroads and uh, myself along with some other educators um, back in 98 uh, decided we, we could do this we could do a school for kids with autism specifically um, so I've been with Crossroads since we opened uh, through various positions, starting as a teaching assistant, actually, and then uh, moving through. Um, but I, I think, we, as Wendy and Cindy both said, we are unique in that we're you know, the only comprehensive ABA program in the Capital District for kids with autism and other disabilities as well. So I, I know we'll talk more about that, but um, I'm certainly proud to be a part of Crossroads from the beginning. 
My name is Melissa Kleinman. I'm the Director of Education. I started off as one of the founding teachers as well. Um, I taught for a while, took a break to be a parent, and became a parent of an integrated nursery school student at Crossroads. And when I came back, I came back in an administrative role. And um, my role is really exciting because I get to do all the intakes. So I get to meet all the new families when they come in. And that's truly a privilege is that these families trust us with their kids and let us help them grow. So that's who I am. Hi, I'm Steve Oyl. My wife Mary and I have a son who is now 19 and he started at Crossroads a month after he was diagnosed. At, uh, he was two years, eight months old and he started at Crossroads a month <clears throat> later. And um, my, we always say that Crossroads, we hold uh, the school dear to our heart because they brought Matthew home to us. And um, I continue to be involved a couple times a year, um, supporting at the holidays, uh, supporting at the gala that we have. Um, I've been known to run a support group here and there. My wife and I did that while well, Matthew was attending, and I did it for some time after that. <clears throat> I'm trying to fit time back into my schedule to continue that or to find some other parents at the school to do it now. Um, but we, the reason we picked Crossroads at the time, I remember we saw five schools in eight days after Matthew was diagnosed and they all said they did ABA and we didn't uh, which is applied behavior analysis and we didn't know much about it we had read about it um, but what we did know after seeing the five schools is that Crossroads knew what they were doing in terms of ABA it was clear that the other schools might were trying to but they were not comprehensive to use the word Kelly just used um, and that was all we needed to know they inspired confidence and uh, we brought them in and uh, the rest, so to speak, is history. Great. So I've heard um, from everyone has mentioned that Crossroads is a, is a school. It's an applied behavior analysis school. We work with kids with autism. Um, if you were going to explain to someone who had never heard of Crossroads and you're, you know, away from here or here, <laughs> you could, if you could um, explain what is a Crossroads, what, what is it? Um, because we've had a lot of, what, just give a little, just a little short description. Let's start with Cindy. Um, well, if you do, um, as a parent, and when your family receives an autism diagnosis, you know, many questions, of course. You're like, where do I go? What, what you know, how do I make the next decision? Um, in addition to my husband and I being a, you know, a, a team, we, there's only so much we can do. I found, as, as Steve mentioned, the parent group to be so crucial and even when I meet new parents now I tell them connect with even if it's one family or a parent you know talk to them um, even it's I learned from those who have already done what I did you know there were families that came before me of course and but for me to start picking their brains and listening to what they had to say and, and some of their experiences I'm like oh wow somebody else is experiencing what I'm going through now um, they can help me and I became a sponge and just said this was this valuable you know the be, participating in the parent group was a wonderful thing I'm one of those person dive right into everything so I, I loved doing some of the fundraising I, I just I, I love t telling people about what this school does because you know as more children you know that as most of you know the CDC is more kids are being diagnosed as every minute every day and um, they need somewhere to go they need assistance they need somebody to help um, them support their child and as Wendy said you know bring them back to community involvement you know th these kids are shown how to do a daily simple routine and then are able to take it out into the community. That's one thing I always kind of thought the community needs to learn about my child. I don't need to have, you know, adjust everything or, or take him out of the community because he's not necessarily the same interacting the same way everybody else does. So I, that really helped me. And this school really gave me that confidence and taught me to sit and help my son and teach my chil my other children to do the same thing. And, and now I can go tell other parents, you know, this is what, you know, have you heard of Crossroads? Every single time I hear a family talk about this and you hear it more and more now, uh, you can t tell them go check out Crossroads and you know social media helps so much I could say you know go check their website or you know there, there's a lot out there that you can find out and 
you know, when I hear Crossroads, and, and I, I can't believe, but people still do live in a little bit of a bubble, um, we're going to tell them all about it. And, and, you know, when Vicki asks, how, how do you tell somebody who doesn't know, I am, I'm always, <laughs> as we all know, opening my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Do you want to add to that, Wendy? Yeah, I want to say that when we were, after Zachary was diagnosed, we examined a couple of programs. We did a lot of reading about autism. And what we found was that applied behavior analysis was the only teaching approach that had any kind of um, legitimate research behind it. And I, in talking about 20, at the time, 20 to 30 years of clinical research, clinical laboratory research behind it, that showed it, that, showed that it worked. In teaching, a lot of times, um, and there's certainly a lot about that in the news today, there's a lot of guessing about outcomes. You know, how do you measure teaching? Well, using ABA, you measure learning. You can measure it because you're taking data. You're looking to see if the child is learning it or not. You have numbers in front of you to see how many times they were able to perform a certain task. You can, you can see the progress on paper as well as in the child. There's no guesswork. There's no guesswork about, I don't know, I think he knows it. He either knows it or he doesn't, and the numbers will tell you that. And I think for, for um, parents with kids with autism who are often nonverbal, getting these numbers is a way of, show, is tell, is tells us how our child is learning. It also tells us when a child needs to be taught a different way. And these kinds of techniques that are, that are derived from research, and research is ongoing, I think inspire a tremendous amount of confidence. Certainly it inspired it in me. My child made tremendous progress in the time he was at, at Crossroads. And I really, once we got it, and, and our whole home was based around ABA methods and technologies. Um, and it made a difference. The consistency made a difference. The support of our, his, his team mm -hmm. made a huge difference. And I, I can't tell you, but he, he became a loving, caring, giggling little boy <laughs> um, when before he used to sit and just watch the wheels on his cars and that transformation alone uh, was miraculous to me and so I'm always grateful to Crossroads and God I love to see it when it's happening to other kids it's mm -hmm. a miracle and it's something it's it's something that you just don't get using other techniques can I follow so, up on that real quick yeah Mickey? definitely um, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with what you said, Wendy, and I like the part, and I was thinking about the part especially where um, you can, by looking at the data, and literally when Matthew was going, our experience was it was day to day. You know, whether or not we received it at home every day, we knew by the end of the week what the whole week looked like and what they were working on. And what really impresses me is that it's not just whether or not it's working, but should we change what we're doing, mm -hmm. which is not uh, a model I see in certainly in other preschools or public schools for school age kids. Um, so I think that's f very important, especially for kids that uh, on the autism spectrum. And I also would just add that, you know, I, I remember reading somewhere where we were looking at uh, Crossroads or, or reading about ABA, um, about Helen Keller and about, um, and so for me, when I think about what it, how would I describe Crossroads to anyone? I would use the Helen Keller story and I would say that, you know, there's two things that uh, Andy Sullivan did with Helen Keller. One was don't, she wouldn't let the fact that she was blind, deaf, and mute get in the way of her, not only her learning, but get in the way of um, her um, functioning. So. M if you don't know Helen Keller's story, you certainly probably know this one where, you know, she would constantly tantrum if she didn't like the food at dinner and she would toss her plate. And Annie Sullivan, I think her first night there, you know, the rest of the family just let Helen go and Annie made her clean it up. And she had to do hand over hand, which is something we do uh, through ABA, and made her clean it up. And it was not pretty, but she wouldn't let that stop her from being part of the family and being responsible. And then the other thing is how in the teaching, it breaks things down into smaller steps. And if you think about how she learned what water was, that wasn't just that one moment. That was, I don't know if it was weeks or months of continuing to label things with an alphabet that Helen didn't recognize. And it finally clicked. But it wouldn't have clicked if it wasn't broken into smaller steps. And that appealed to us very much because we knew little about autism, but we knew a lot about our son. And we thought, 
this is going to be very difficult to teach him and uh, that's why we hold Crossroads so close to our heart because they are really the purest form of ABA in the capital region and the north I think of the northeast area. Awesome. I think um, you know you've heard community from I think each each one of these people that have spoken, and I think that's an important part of who we are. We want to be a part of the community. Um, you know, I think we're going to talk probably about that a little bit more later in ways that the community can help us. But our our goal is for all kids with and without disabilities, because we serve children without disabilities. We serve children also outside of the autism spectrum. That's kind of where we started, and and that's where our passion is. But. Uh, ABA, as we've been talking about, it works for many different families. And so I think we really want to be a part of the community. We want to make sure our students are successful in their community, whether it be with their family, whether it be on field trips, um, during their school day. So I, I, you've heard that word a lot, and I think that's when I describe Crossroads, I don't want to lose sight of that, that yes, we're a school, and we started a school for kids with autism, and that's still a big part of who we are. Yeah. Uh, but there's so much more now to Crossroads. We've grown in a lot of different ways, and, and there's many arms to us at this point. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add to that, or can I jump to a different Go question right ahead, before? Jump. I want to make sure to get in um, while we have this particular crew. Is the early stories like I heard that you had just five kids starting out. Um, Melissa, can you talk about that for a minute? And then we'll kind of go around, jump in where you are, yeah, how I mean, to get started. <laughs> we started from the ground up. We were in their painting classrooms and scraping together furniture and meeting in families' homes, trying to pull it all together. Literally started with five kids and we worked with them both in the center, but also in the community setting, doing some home-based services. And it just grew from there. It was really... Yep. I remember one of our first staff meetings, we had to sit on the floor in an office because we didn't have furniture yet, but yeah. <laughs> it was important that we get the school going. I mean, we, we basically quit our jobs and mm -hmm. um, just kind of worked with kids, worked with the families to get services up and going yeah. until um, we got the approval to actually open through the state education department. Mm -hmm. um, we, we couldn't really move forward with the school, but we were doing our best to make sure there wasn't lapse in services and we were still providing kids what they needed. So we, uh, when you say we did from the <laughs> grassroots, yes. it certainly was we we yeah. borrowed materials we scrapped together any toys that we could find that were donated and to the chagrin of our husbands when we said no more paychecks we're just <laughs> <laughs> um, but and it was so the, the dedications of the families too that yeah. worked right alongside us yep. mm -hmm. Do you have and as a parent <clears throat> excuse me seeing the dedication of these people who are willing to take that time that energy that passion to help my child and my family um, move on I just thought you know if if they're d doing that how can I not do what I need to do of course initially for my f son and my family <clears throat> our excuse me but then to help others you know to become involved to you know participate in either in the parent groups or um, and then start helping with fundraising and and other things I you know I had to you know these people you know they said 10 15 years they, they they've been involved and you know I I'm extremely grateful I say that all the time and I, I try to thank everybody because as, as Wendy and, and Steve and we've all said right from the beginning we've all tried to just step back and say okay I have somebody here that's partnering with me to help mm -hmm. me with my son and my family and I don't want to get emotional but <laughs> I could because that you yeah. know that's really what I needed and what we as a family you know help helped us go out into the community and just say mm -hmm. And I, and I work all the time at educating, you know, people in my church now, you know, because we're saying, John, be quiet, or John this, and they're like going to shake hands with John, and that's important, yeah. and that's the way it's supposed to be, and he wouldn't have learned any of those things, and, you know, it, if it wasn't for the the trials and repeat repeat education, but, but education that reached him, so I, I'm extremely grateful, and I try to say it all the time. Wendy, do you have an early story? I have an early I story. Know. I remember sitting in my living room with a bunch of teachers <laughs> and parents <laughs> and figuring out just how we were going to make this work. Yes. And we started this school at a time, this idea was conceived, I believe, in March of 1998. Mm -hmm. um, we started this school at a time when there was no funding available for preschools, especially preschools that only serve children with disabilities. There was a, um, a moratorium on them. The state was not approving any of these. And it, it goes to speak of the dedication of the people involved at the beginning that by December of 1998, we had been approved. 
that's first of all really really fast mm -hmm. in terms of just getting anything through the state um, but at a time when there was a moratorium that was an incredible feat and you know again one of those little miracles you just know you're doing the right thing because you're fighting with people but things are going along anyway mm -hmm. they're going along where do we what building are we going to use you know who are we going to integrate with mm -hmm. we had lots and lots of questions and everybody just did their very best and it grew and it grew and it grew and at the start we were not we were five kids mm -hmm. five families mm -hmm. few teachers and an idea mm -hmm. and that idea has become a school now that serves over a hundred children uh, using the best applied behavior analysis strategies available and to me that's you know what <laughs> one of the things that my son learned in a crossroads was he learned how most kids with autism don't um, oh, what's the word I want they they don't sh mimic other kids mm -hmm. behaviors they they're not aware of what's a lot of what's going around with them around them and one of the things that my son did at a typical preschool that I sent him to with an aide was he saw another little boy tug a little girl's hair during circle time. And my Zachary leaned over and tugged the hair of the girl in front of him, <laughs> who of course said, ouch! <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher said, oh my, I couldn't believe he did that. And I said, I couldn't believe he did that. He doesn't imitate behavior. <laughs> so that was an amazing, an amazing moment for us. Um, and it's those little things that you cherish mm -hmm. uh, when you have a, ch a child with disabilities. Um, you know, the small progress that they make that says, you know, oh yeah, I'm a part of this community too. So that's that's my story. Mm -hmm. That's a good a good story. How are we doing for for time? Are we we have, oh real wow we're good we're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me say what makes Crossroads unique and every and you ever. Whoever wants to just jump in. Well, I think I think there's a lot of good special ed programs in the area. I think the Capital District of New York is pretty fortunate that we've got a lot of programs available for kids. That's not the case in other parts of the state or certainly in other parts of the country. Um, and so different programs are right for different kids. Uh, as, I, as I said earlier, though, I think Crossroads is the only comprehensive ABA program. Uh, in the Capital District. So while we have the center and we serve uh, kids with and without disabilities and kids with, with many different disabilities, um, we also do outreach through our clinic program which serves kids um, in their homes or daycares and that can be funded through their insurance company. So there's kind of a lot, like I said earlier, a lot of arms to Crossroads now um, and I think that probably makes us unique. There are, there are other programs that serve children with autism and there are other programs um, that use techniques of ABA but I think uh, being the comprehensive program that we are, I think that's what sets Crossroads a little bit different. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. You want to add anything, Melissa? The, well, the individualized approach, too, and the communication with parents, it's mm -hmm. so important to us that it's truly a team approach. When mm -hmm. I tour our family, I tell them, you'll know if it's a right fit for your family, and you have to have buy-in from everybody. Right. And the family knows the child the best. So really working together as a team, so I think that that's unique, and making sure we're in daily communication with them so they know exactly what we're doing with their kiddos so they can carry that over at home because mm -hmm. they have just as much responsibility as we do to make sure the kids continue to progress. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Steve, you want to add anything? Boy, I think I've covered the unique part. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, mean I, I think the the comprehensive ABA, because people think, whether they think positive or negative about ABA, they think of it as one or two things. They think of it as being very intense. And sometimes the one-on-one -on -one discrete trial work can be in, a little bit intense mm -hmm. for, for a youth. Um, but there's so many things about ABA, so many different techniques. And there's so many, um, it's not just about techniques, it's about, um, okay, I lost that train of thought. <laughs> I should have had tea instead of water, I guess. Um, it isn't just the techniques, it's the how they use all of them, and it's the philosophy of it. Mm -hmm. I think if there were one, I know this isn't the question, but if there were one thing, um, I would wish for professionals and families in our area is to if you don't if you think you know what crossroads is and how aba is done go to crossroads anyway ask for a tour and mm. check it out that's that's my thing with parents that call me and, and say well now i agree with kelly there's lots of great special ed preschool programs in the area um but it, it doesn't take away from crossroads uh, and i've heard stories about typically developing youths 
that are more prepared for kindergarten when they attend Crossroads than oh, yeah other schools perhaps, especially yeah. if they've been in a different school before that. And that's okay. our goal. We have a minute yeah. and a half, so I'm going to go with Wendy first and then Cindy. <laughs> unique. Oh, unique. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Time, Time left. Uh, well, Sorry. I think one of the things that makes Crossroads really unique is, you know, and I'm sure all, all the staff that work at most of the preschools in this area are dedicated and work hard and love their kids. But I will tell you, we have tremendous longevity among our staff. Our staff come, and either they like what we're doing, and, and or if they don't like what we're doing, they, they leave pretty quick. Um, but if they like what we're doing, they stay with us. And they stay with us for years and years and years. And that's unheard of in, um, in chi early childhood education and, and child care. Uh, the turnover in those in this area is usually very, very high, um, and, our, and our best um, our best campaigners are the, the folks who have been with us for a long time, who truly buy into this program and give you know, uh, so much to it outside of their, their hours that they're actually working with children. They're doing other things. They're, they're going to benefit to fairs and handing out information. A, a, just a truly dedicated staff um, who spend a lot of time learning about the best way to do their job and then spend a lot of time with us, many, mm -hmm. many years mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really unique to mm -hmm. our program. That's very mm -hmm. true. Cindy, do you have any last parting? Well, as a current <laughs> board member, I, I know I was taking it all, not necessarily the uniqueness, but yes, we, we work hard to try to <clears throat> compensate and keep Wendy said they do uh, the board or the uh, employees do stay and they they find that but it, it takes a special person to do that mm -hmm. and we're working hard you know we try to go understand what's happening in the, the state so that we can mm -hmm. keep our staff here and and comparable pay and things like that you know it, it's so important mm -hmm. uh, you know <laughs> when they can go to work for McDonald's for $15 an hour we have to consider that we have to look at all these things and how can we with such a life in their hands that the, the, these the staff is helping to bring up how can we not um, consider paying them a fair wage and, and everything else that we do. This, this, it's so important to make sure that all this is, is taken together and our board is a wonderful group of people yeah. right now and um, we're very grateful. So mm -hmm. I'll very good. <laughs> you mean since I left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still no. So um, again, we're gonna be right, we're gonna be re um, changing up our table right now, but we're gonna try to become we are gonna come back before Giving Tuesday. So I would invite both of you to join us again if you're if you're willing, and anyone who, who wants to come again. We're trying to get some different people as well in um, to talk more, you know more in depth about Crossroads, um, some of the new things too. But we're going to be changing in a few minutes to talk about some of our newer programs, things that how many arms we've um, <laughs> grown <laughs> since the five kids. <laughs> so thank you everyone for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
children there and the teachers and everything and I loved the way everybody interacted with each other the the teachers were so hands-on um, and my granddaughter really blossomed um, she doesn't have autism but she does have special needs and she needed OT she needed speech therapy and she was able to find all that at Crossroads and she did remarkably well Excellent. So um, can you bring us up to date a little bit about Crossroads and what are some of the newer arms, as you were saying? Sure. Um, Melissa, do you want to start first and talk about the school, since that's the main part of the program, and then uh, we'll talk about some of the other new programs. Sure. Our center-based program serves children from roughly 2 years old to 12 years old. We have nine classrooms, seven of which are preschool classrooms. All of our classrooms are integrated, the preschool classrooms. They're taught by certified special education teachers, and our teaching assistants are certified as well. Um, those are, are great classrooms. They're like typical nursery school classrooms. Um, we also have two school each classrooms those are divided by age and they're self-contained we have kiddos that come from quite a large radius for um, our special education services so we serve several different counties maybe roughly eight and over 20 different school districts um, the program is a five and a half hour program so the kids come Monday through Friday from 9 to 2 30 and we run a 12 month program um, so that's in, within our center-based program, we offer speech and OT and PT. We have a school psychologist, several board-certified behavior analysts on staff. Um, it's a pretty, you know, as everybody talked about, it's a pretty comprehensive ABA program, but really everybody can benefit from that strategy. So we do have children diagnosed with autism, but we also have children that have other diagnoses or maybe no diagnoses at all. Um, and then just typical nursery school kids. Like I said, I sent my kids there for nursery school because they benefited from the same strategies that everybody else did. So that's really what our center-based program looks like, and then we have other extensions. Yeah, the center-based program is where we started, and it's certainly grown uh, from those days. We talked about having five kids, and I think they all had autism at that point. It certainly expanded in many ways. Um, but we also now serve kids through our clinic model, which is um, funded either privately through parents or through their insurance companies. Um, there's diff different ways to access that. That um, is exclusively for children on the autism spectrum. New York State passed a law uh, several years ago um, which required insurance companies in New York State to fund uh, ABA therapy for kids with autism. And then it took a little bit for uh, that actually to get started because one of the requirements was that there had to be a licensed behavior analyst and New York State didn't have a license. So it took some time to get that passed. Um, now we, we finally are in that boat. We have between the center and the clinic uh, we have, I believe, five behavior analysts on staff um, that oversee those programs. So it's it's a little limiting. Uh, the insurance bill is a little limiting in that they can only serve children with autism, um, and we know ABA works for lots of kids. Um, so that that's something that the state is really working. Um, our state organization is really working with the state to try to lift that. Um, but that's that's what's happening right now. Um, we do a lot of community outreach. We have uh, parent trainings that we offer to our parents at the school, but also to community members. Um, typically, they're around one a month that we're offering in the evenings. Um, and if anyone's interested, they can contact the school to get the schedule of, of when those are happening and the topics that we're covering. Um, daycare services, we provide wraparound daycare. So um, kids that attend our school can get services before and after if the parents' work schedule dictates that. Um, and then Vicki, now that Vicki's in a new position, we've added some new programs in terms of our volunteer program. Um, a lot of um, really just public awareness, trying to get our name out. Um, certainly our fundraising efforts um, have been ramped up a bit and that's something that's really important to our program. So those are probably more of the new uh, aspects of the program, I think, right now that, that we've really pushed. And I want to jump in with um, that we have a web a website um, as Kelly was saying you know to to go online and look to see when our schedule of parent meetings and things like that is also our fundraising calendar our donate button works mm -hmm. um, things about you know our wish list because we're always um, trying to you know. Um, save money on the on the budget by getting things donated so um, and our volunteer orientation so mm -hmm. um, that's all available on our website as well um, how about if I ask how peop how you came to contact Crossroads or how you came to know Crossroads and let me start with Steve because he's um, <coughs> so got some like he'll get us warmed up and well, then <laughs> for us um, I, we were uh, accessing early intervention services for Matthew uh, 
before he was diagnosed because we knew there were some delays and some trouble. So he was still going through early intervention when we were looking at when he got the diagnosis. And uh, they had a list. We got. I mean, it, for us, it's kind of basic. We got a list from the county, our county worker, that said. Here's the schools you can call. Here's the ones that do ABA. Here's the ones that do these other therapies. We saw five that did ABA. Those are the five that we saw. Um, so that's kind of how we found you. Um, and in terms, you know, so in, since then, I just try to talk about it whenever it comes up. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes yeah. parents. I tend to network a lot, so I have different people out there saying, hey, you should call Steve. He might be able to help you about advocacy or about uh, preschool ideas. And my big pitch to people is to go see Crossroads. Like, mm -hmm. if you're thinking about it, then just go see it. Go talk to the people, go watch them in action for an hour, and, and from there, if they can decide from getting information firsthand I can sleep at night if they can mm -hmm. if they say yes this is what I want for my child or no I don't want this you know it's funny as a personally I might disagree with them <laughs> on a level of no they don't want that because I feel so strongly about ABA and Crossroads but I can sleep at night and I don't bother parents if they say no once they've really checked it out mm -hmm. Great. so I don't know if that answers your question yeah it does yeah. great um, Kathy how did you find how did you find Crossroads found Crossroads through my children, actually. Um, my granddaughter was in a preschool program and she just wasn't getting the individual one-on-one -on -one attention that she really, really needed. Mm -hmm. So Crossroads was recommended and um, she was enrolled and I babysit for her every day so I had to pick her up. So it was very easy for me to fall in love with Crossroads mm -hmm. because I stood there every day waiting for her mm -hmm. but watching everything that mm -hmm. went on and uh, it was really um, refreshing to see the interaction between the teachers and the children and now as a volunteer being in the cl classroom every day um, I can see progress in children who started in September and here it is now November and when they first came in in the beginning of the year, they didn't really know what to do. Now these little children, they know that they have to get it, their backpacks open. They know they have to put their little lunch boxes on the counter and their little drinks, and they know that it's playtime. And when it's, you know, the different times that they have to do different things and the tools that are used were amazing to me. Um, all the, the majority of the children with autism had little books with little pictures where they could take the pictures if they couldn't speak and put the picture onto what they needed to, what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So to me, it, it's, a, it's been a huge learning experience. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I thank you all really for allowing me to volunteer <laughs> because I do love it. Yeah. We're lucky to have volunteers. <laughs> yeah, we are. And your your how you came to contact Crossroads is a little different, right. but how can you talk about that at all? Right, with the Schenectady Foundation, we do um, provide grants to Schenectady County agencies who serve people who work and live in Schenectady County. And it was probably in uh, 2012, maybe 13. We had a um, new grant cycle running, and we did a, a couple of presentations at the library which you attended and so we kind of found each other in mm -hmm. that way um, what we did find I know it's ex our exec director did take a tour of the school um, we did grant some curriculum for mm -hmm. you I know one was handwriting without, without tears, tears and there was a math program touch I can't math. Remember the yeah math, it was touch math um, which is used uh, throughout the whole um, yeah. age level of the school and it's been very successful and we've recently um, Provided another grant with the with the um, the food the brand, healthy food healthy program. food program, which we really um, our our goal and our real focus is strengthening families and the fact that you're helping these children, but you're actually helping them with their families is what what really s helped us say that's part of our goal mm -hmm. is to strengthen families as a whole. So um, I visited the little the school to find out what the what the healthy food was doing and. Everybody, all the children were so happy to show me what they had made. And I know, and you said, it's hard for um, many people on the spectrum to try new things due yeah. to taste or texture yeah. or whatever. So um, we were happy to be able to provide that. 
Thank the you. funds for that program. Yeah. Um, and we're happy that you keep that you keep loving us. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't think we would be able to do it to that extent if it wasn't mm -hmm. for the Schenectady Foundation. So we are so grateful. Can you talk about that food rigidity a little bit? Because that is such a big thing with with kids on the spectrum, with people on the spectrum. Yeah, it can it's be. a big thing for a, for a lot of the population, but also, but specifically for our population. Can you sure. talk about that a it little? It can be, and, and it's it's kind of hard to to talk about that generally because every child is so different. Um, but many, many kids come to us. I know when Melissa does the intakes with families, um, that's one of the questions that we ask is how, how is their eating, how is their sleeping, all those kinds of things. Because we, we want to tackle uh, that child as a whole. You know, it's not just teaching him how to talk or teaching him his letters or his colors. It's really looking at the, the child as a whole and how are we going to help that child be a part of the community. Um, and so many, many parts of that aren't just those ABCs and one, two, threes. It's, it's how do they sleep? How do they um, interact with their siblings? How do they eat? Um, and, and I know she often hears in intakes that they, they don't eat a lot. They're, they're very rigid in what they eat or have very specific things that they'll eat. And it's important um, that we expose them to, to lots of different foods. And exposure takes time and many practices with that. Um, for lots of reasons, one one being health reasons, and we want to make sure our students are really um, exposed to healthy foods and not always relying on. It tends to be, and what I'm hearing a lot of, um, crackers and goldfish crackers mm -hmm. and Doritos. Um, yeah, <laughs> chips and those kind of carbs, and and not necessarily the kids that are. Um, really solely eating vegetables and fruits so I think that's something that was our goal was to do exposure but to do that through a fun way so the teachers are very creative in how they expose the children to different foods that they may not have been exposed to before or maybe it's too difficult at home for the parents to try to bring in new foods um, when they've got other kids running around and they're just getting home from work and trying to make dinner and it, it does take time I know Steve Matthew had certainly had um, some challenges with eating, and I don't know if you want to speak to that. I would <clears throat> put that, not, he doesn't have challenges anymore, but I would say the rigidity in his food selection is in the present tense. Mm -hmm. That is still mm -hmm. still current. Um, you know, frankly, it was not one of the battles we wanted to right. pick, in part yeah. because we were fighting a lot of other battles, like yeah. learning how to talk, mm -hmm. lear and learning. He wasn't mm -hmm. really an aggressive kid, but little kids and with frustration we just we always were guarded against not hitting no matter what was going on not hitting himself or anyone else mm -hmm. if he was frustrated mm -hmm. so we kind of let the food thing go crossroads staff at crossroads uh, didn't want us to do that <laughs> <laughs> they were encouraging us to address it and uh, we just as a family chose Mary and I chose not to worry about it the thing I would say that we're lucky about is he likes some healthy things, including carrots and apples, mm. um, and he is still a healthy young man. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I kind of put that up to God, I mm -hmm. guess. I'm not sure how that played itself out. Um, uh, so, I could speak to that. I would like to add quickly, if I could, something about ABA in reference to what Kathleen was talking about okay. a minute ago cool. about the um, pictures exchange. Picture exchange communication, communication system, the PECS, when you talked about using um, students can use pictures to kind of communicate either their needs or their desires or their wants. And um, an interesting thing about that, one, I want to point out that I know that. Like, I'm not an educator. <laughs> I'm just a parent. And I learned that 17 years ago, and I still know what that is. Mm -hmm. A lot of places, a lot of preschools and maybe, maybe uh, other schools use PECS and they use it well. But one thing I remember um, going to a preschool with another parent on a tour and it was discussed as a, uh, as a therapy. <clears throat> and I thought to myself, I don't know that I agree with that. I think it's a, a, it's a learning, it's a system to communicate really. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people take one thing they learn about and think, well, that's what ABA is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really what ABA is to me is besides all of the facets of teaching uh, and taking a behavioral approach it's really about back to looking at that data like is what we're doing working and let's take data day to day data day to day <laughs> to, <laughs> to make data. sure that it's it is working and sometimes within a week within less than a week they're going to change their methodology because this is not we have enough data to show this is not helping the student and I think that I just was thinking of that when you referenced that Kathleen um, 
about how people think they know what ABA is. Uh, and real quick, mm -hmm. if I could reference behavior, I think that when people think of the word behavior, at best, they polarize it, either it's good or it's, it's bad. bad. Mm -hmm. And scientists, I've learned from conferences and uh, therapists, that applied behavior anal analysts, that it's really, behavior is not necessarily good or bad, and that everything we do is based on behavior. Mm -hmm. So I think that adds to the negativity, the, the view of ABA being kind of negative for some people. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's, quite frankly, I, I think it's inaccurate and it's wrong, and that's why I bring it up today, because I mm -hmm. think that people should get more information about behavior mm -hmm. and what that word really means, and then how, do, how does ABA affect, you know, they say ABA can help all of us, not just people on autism, mm -hmm. and I, yeah. I believe that and I agree with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So uh, thank you. I just mm -hmm. want to throw those ideas out as they were coming up at the table. And as we tour family, as we talk about that, that there's everything you learn here you can use with anybody. I use it at home with my own kiddos, behaviors communication. So when I mm -hmm. ask them about how they eat or how they communicate or how they sleep, I ask about behaviors. But don't tell me just because they're doing something bad, but because that's how they're communicating something to us. And I can't figure out what they're communicating mm -hmm. unless I know what they're doing. Um, and then when we think about the data collection piece, even with the Healthy Eating Grant, we're, we're still collecting data to make sure what we're doing is mm -hmm. working and mm -hmm. reporting mm -hmm. that back. So right. our teachers are remarkable in what they do because they're so multi talented, they're rock stars. And it's exciting to have people come in and be part of that because I think they get that energy and they get that vibe from them and they want to be part of it. And having volunteers and grantors is great because we get to keep spreading the bigger picture mm -hmm. and the bigger words. So it's mm -hmm. great that they're helping Crossroads, but it's really disseminating the knowledge about mm -hmm. ABA and how do we kind of continue to grow this because the more people understand, the more our kiddos will be accepted in the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we get more people to volunteer and you know, d donate to us. How would it, what would you suggest any, anybody? Mm -hmm. I think oh, go ahead. this is a good step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it's to get, the, the, word get out. the word out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you're putting here. in some good good things at the school in terms of our volunteer orientation. There's always an opportunity to come in. If you can't make it this month, there's one next month to come in. And and the first step of that, as, as Kathy went through, is learn about who we are and what volunteer opportunities there might be that might be a match for you. And, and maybe there's not, but there's lots of different ways to do that. Kathy's uh, chosen to be a volunteer that's right in the classroom uh, during the day, and, and that's wonderful. But there's also opportunities for people to help that are outside of the classroom. So mm -hmm. if, if you're not comfortable being in a classroom, um, we certainly want you to know who we are, but there are opportunities to help um, with with stuff outside, you know, mm -hmm. that we've got a garden that we're growing and we've got uh, lots of need for building and those kinds of things. So there's mm -hmm. lots of opportunities to volunteer. Um, and I think just putting the word out and spreading it through those volunteer orientation sessions is, mm -hmm. is important. Um, Steve? Yes. You are, you, you, well, you would always do our silent auction at our gala. You also do something around the holidays where you're in the building every year. And why do you, why do you keep volunteering? I mean, Matthew's, you know, grown up and, you know, how do you, why do you keep staying involved with us? Um, you know, the argument that I've had with a couple of staff that are still at the school <laughs> and when Matthew was, it oh, includes Kelly. Yeah and yep. Melissa, and there's a few others, yep. is uh, something I said in the first segment of the program, that you know we hold Crossroads close to our heart because you brought Matthew home mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. And the argument becomes uh, from the staff and from you all that, well, no, we didn't do that. You did that because you and Mary did that. Without you, it couldn't happen. I think it's taken me a long time to admit that maybe it was a partnership, but I still feel like you're the you're the bigger partner crossroads mm -hmm. because without that knowledge we couldn't have done that and you know before we were crossroads he was we were already we hadn't didn't have a diagnosis but we knew he was delayed and we were at a different school and if I could describe it's a good school but if I could describe it I would say it, it does the opposite of ABA mm -hmm. and at the time before we knew about ABA we thought that was the best place for Matthew because yeah. in my touchy-feely world you know I felt like well, yeah, that's going to be good. You don't want to force him to do much because, holy mackerel, he's going to freak out on you. Um, and then when I learned about ABA, we were a little frightened by it, but we were mostly encouraged by it. So it's for, And then the rest is history. I mean, he, he grew. It took, you know, 
it took some time but he grew and he's doing fantastic yeah that's why I stay involved and that's mm-hmm. why I like coming around around the holidays I like seeing the different in some ways the, di- the different children 15 17 years later have the same reactions and you know when I see a child walking up to see Santa mm-hmm. and crying but the staff encouraging him and bringing him up anyway or her up anyway mm-hmm. um, I feel happy because Matthew went through that yeah. and I know that this child is not going to be any worse for the wear they're not going to need talk therapy or mm-hmm. a psychotherapy later on and most likely they, they, they're entering a larger world which they don't know exists mm-hmm. and when I see that I get happy because I know that no, in five minutes they're going to be fine and they did something new today they, they'd never done before mm-hmm. and without crossroads that may not have happened so, I think, oh, I'm sorry no, no, go ahead. I was just going to say I think Steve, that was the biggest thing for me to get used to when my granddaughter was at Crossroads. I didn't really understand the concept of doing it yourself. You know, I I took care of her during the day, and I kind of catered to her, I have to admit. (laughs) Um, But she was kind of forced to do things, and I really couldn't understand why. And then one day, she didn't come out with the class. So I went down to the classroom, and she's sitting facing the teacher and the teacher's got her little face and you know making her look right at the teacher and I'm thinking my goodness what the heck's going on and then the teacher explained to me what the process was I had no clue whatsoever Mm -hmm. so to make the eye contact look at me so that they are connecting Mm -hmm. and not Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. absolutely five minutes okay Um, so I have something to add, actually, because you're, you're talking about community. Um, I know that you, you you say you bring your kids out into the community or have them do projects in the community, and we also were involved in that when we, we uh, the foundation uh, did some fundraising for the J Street Fire incident. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Um, I know your classrooms also gave a donation, mm-hmm. whatever they thought they were helping with, whether it was giving a kid a new toothbrush or mm-hmm. somebody a new cereal bowl to eat out of. Um, we were very happy to see that come from the yeah. kids. So yep. um, you're integrating that caring of others outside mm-hmm. of their, yeah. their own world. So that's a good one. I think, as you think of anything else you might want to bring up, I think an analogy to uh, Kathy, what you were talking about, and not understanding at first right. why they would kind of um, try to get your daughter, granddaughter, to make eye contact. Um, you know. The thing about it to me is, it, the analogy is really what every parent wants for their kids, is to live to their highest mm-hmm. potential, to be the best citizen you can be in the community, mm-hmm. and to be, and also to feel good about yourself because you've learned how to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, frankly, I know we're speaking about not just people with autism, mm-hmm. but from my own window and my own experience over the years at Crossroads, it's a lot of people, a lot of children with autism, and you know some of them if you don't try to pull them out of that world would be just as happy being in that world and you could argue well that might be okay if they're happy and my argument would be well how do you know they couldn't be more happy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if we didn't challenge them and sometimes they need an extra push and I think people forget that I think people you know it's it's ironic for me because I'm an emotional Italian fellow (laughs) Uh, and I feel like you know, most of the important life decisions that my wife and I have made together, we try not to make them emotionally, not base them on that. And I think that sometimes people do. And the sin of that, from from my opinion, is that you're kind of lim- you might be limiting your world or your family's world by doing that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to think of that. Um, that's why I feel good about hey, if you see what if you learn really what ABA is and see crossroads for yourself, and you can walk away from it. I feel like I've done my work. Yeah, I mean, we're a nonprofit school. No one is in the school to make a million dollars. And I think what Steve talked about, what Kathy talked about, and Jean bringing the community involved, I think, um, you know, we want to be a part of the community. And, and the more rewards that we get are the kids that are making progress, making success. I get emails from kids now that are in college or graduating that went to Crossroads and that's more rewarding than, you know, like I said, we're not making a million dollars. We're, we're a nonprofit school, um, but it's really, we're there because of the kids and the family mm-hmm. and for the kids and the family. 
Um, how can people watching, or if, if somebody had a, has um, a child that maybe they're thinking about looking for a school like Crossroads, how would they go about it? Well, they would call me. So they could call me or email me. I love to give tours. It's my favorite part is doing intakes with families. Um, so if they were looking just for a nursery school experience for their kiddos mm -hmm. or if their child's receiving special services and they're looking for a program, they could contact me to set up a tour and a visit. What's the number? Melissa or Kelly? 518-280-0083. Um, but also, if, your if you suspect that your child has um, needs and maybe he hasn't gone through the process yet, your first step is really to contact your school district or your county, depending on the age of your child. Um, because really, the kids that come through an IEP are placed with us. It's not that, that we choose or accept them, um, but it goes through the Committee for Special Education at your school. So important that, um, that you contact. If you're under three, you contact your early intervention office at your county uh, but if you're over three then you need to contact your school district mm -hmm. and if people are looking to volunteer at our school um, they can definitely go on our website as well we're also on Facebook Twitter and Pinterest um, so um, yep any let's give one little word or recap or something because we have one minute left so mm -hmm. Kathy one way one thing you'd like to say to people well I what I would like to say is please volunteer it's very rewarding and it'll make such a difference in your life I would say keep up, keep up the good work <laughs> <laughs> I would say Giving Tuesday is coming up in the end of the month and we're hoping people will make a donation to Crossroads and, and to tag on what Vicki's saying, we rely a lot on the community support. So we want to be a part of the community, but we also rely on the community to support us. Um, part of that's through our fun, fun, fundraising, uh, as well as donations. And um, Giving Tuesday is that holiday that comes up after Black Friday and after Cyber Monday. Then on Giving Tuesday, uh, we hope that you remember us, as well as other nonprofits uh, across the state and across the country. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about us. Mm -hmm. Crossroads and ABA. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> Check it out. And if you have any questions, if you're having trouble with your child or questions or concerns, you can also call me on my cell phone, 518-423-7200. I can help you get directed where you need to go. And he also plays the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for watching and over and out. <laughs> <laughs>